There are no passengers on Spaceship Earth. We are all crew, Marshal McLuhan. Hello, dear friends. Today we continue our series of videos about the planets of the solar system, and our next destination is our home planet, Earth. If you haven't seen our previous videos about Mercury and Venus, you can watch them by clicking on the hint in the upper right corner. In this video, you will learn the entire history of our planet, starting from its formation and ending with our present days. Get comfortable and let's begin. Let's start from the very beginning. Five billion years ago. But where is the beautiful blue planet? Our sight is met with only the recently born sun surrounded by protoplanetary dust. Fast forwarding the timeline a bit, we notice billions of rocks swirling around the sun, gradually coming together through accretion. 4.54 billion years ago. Earth comes into existence. Surprisingly, at the dawn of time, life on our planet resembles more of its end, the way religion envisions it. There's hardly any solid land. Instead, there's a sea of molten rock, instead of air, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, sulfur, and water vapor. At one point in time, religious scholars calculated the age of the Earth to be no more than 6,000 years. It wasn't until the beginning of the 19th century that geologists began to suspect that our planet was a true elderly lady. South Africa played a significant role in this realization, Remnants of the most ancient continental plate were preserved in one of its regions. Scientists understood that the rocks in this area were incredibly ancient. Armed with data on the rate of material cooling, the idea that the Earth was initially a molten sphere and years of calculations, 19th century British physicist and mathematician Lord Kelvin concluded that the Earth's age was likely between 20 to 40 million years. This was a significant step forward. Yet even for practical geologists, this figure seemed too small. It's unknown how long science would have remained in doubt if the young scientist Ernest Rutherford hadn't realized that radioactive elements were present inside our planet. All of these elements generate a considerable amount of heat. This fundamentally undermined Kelvin's calculations, as it turned out that the Earth wasn't gradually cooling. On the contrary, it contained constant sources of heat. But the most important discovery was that the decay of radioactive elements allowed for an accurate calculation of Earth's age. 4.5 billion years ago. Several million years, infant years on a planetary scale, after Earth's birth, it faced a rather non-infantile challenge, a young planet named Theia, about the size of Mars. While Theia did collide with Earth, fortunately, it grazed by tangentially. Nonetheless, this was enough to transform both planets into liquid spheres. Actual waves of rock rolled across Earth and trillions of tons of debris were hurled into space. In this cosmic catastrophe, Earth survived. Not only did it survive, but it also gained an ornament. The gravitational force of our planet quickly molded the debris from the disaster into a ring. From this ring, a sphere gradually formed, the Moon. It was much closer than the Moon we know today. Currently, it's approximately 400,000 kilometers away from us, whereas back then it was just 22,000 kilometers away. One can only imagine the breathtaking view Earth had at night. 3.9 billion years ago, Earth truly had a challenging childhood. It was bombarded by debris left over from the formation of the solar system. According to the views of many scientists, these very fragments would bring water to the planet. Each of them contains a minuscule amount of water, but they pelted our planet for over 20 million years. As a result, Earth gradually became covered in oceans. The planet's core remained molten, while the surface cooled to 70-80 degrees Celsius. Due to Earth's extremely rapid rotation, the sun sets just three hours after sunrise. Ferocious winds blow across it. Their speed exceeds that of the most destructive modern hurricanes. The massive gravitational pull of the nearby moon raises enormous waves that sweep across the planet. 3.8 billion years ago, Earth is entirely covered by water. However, upon closer inspection, tiny islands can be seen. These are molten rock formations, volcanic in nature, piercing through the ocean. 
Eventually, this lava will cool, forming volcanic islands. Over time, they will merge, giving rise to the first continents. Nevertheless, the atmosphere remains toxic and the heat is unbearable. Meteors have been bombarding Earth since its inception, but 3.8 billion years ago marked an even more intense phase. They rained down on the planet like hail. Yet our planet's suffering wasn't in vain. Meteors have already brought water here, and scientists believe they may have also carried minerals, simple proteins, and amino acids. Now, as the hurricanes subside and Earth cools, their time has likely come. One popular hypothesis suggests that life on our planet emerged near underwater hydrothermal vents in the depths where sunlight barely penetrates and temperatures drop just above freezing underwater pipes emit something resembling a bluish smoke. In reality, it's not smoke, but hot fluid. Even at the ocean floor, seawater can seep further through cracks in the crust, gathering gases and minerals along the way. This heated mixture is then expelled back into the ocean. There, it encounters a soup of minerals and chemicals left by meteors. According to many researchers, life emerged from this biochemistry. All these substances combined to form single-celled bacteria, the earliest forms of life on Earth. There are, however, speculations that life on our planet arose countless times until it finally adopted the familiar forms we know. Life appeared yet millions of years pass without significant change. Evolution seems to take its time in giving rise to more complex organisms. 3.5 billion years ago. If we look at the shallow waters of the ocean, we will see something resembling rocks beneath the water. In reality, these are cyanobacterial communities. They sustain themselves through photosynthesis converting sunlight and water into glucose, a simple form of sugar. This process releases a byproduct, oxygen. For millions of years, these inconspicuous rocks filled the oceans and atmosphere with oxygen. Without them, Earth likely wouldn't have supported much life. 1.5 billion years ago, days lasted at least 16 hours. However, three billion years have passed since the planet's formation, and there still isn't a complex organism in sight. Yet, the Earth's core remains active, hotter than the surface of the Sun. This heat fractures the Earth's crust, dividing it into massive lithospheric plates. These plates move and stretch across the world's oceans and islands, colliding with one another. As a result, 1.1 billion years ago, a supercontinent named Rodinia emerged 800 million years ago. Due to significant geological activity, a vast number of volcanoes were born. The carbon dioxide gas they emitted mixed with water and transformed into acid rain. Rocky formations absorbed it, preventing its accumulation in the atmosphere, retaining warmth. Currently, there are more of these rock formations than before. They were exposed due to continental collisions. Meanwhile, Due to natural climate fluctuations and changes in solar radiation, Earth is cooling. The amount of greenhouse gas released into the atmosphere is unable to retain the sun's warmth. Polar regions became icy and began reflecting more sunlight, which in turn caused the spreading of ice to other areas. Earth's surface temperature dropped to minus 40 degrees. The ice locked the oceans to a depth of over one kilometers possibly one of the longest and coldest glacial periods in Earth's history ensued. 750 million years ago. Despite everything, the planet remains hot beneath the ice. Volcanoes continue to exist under the ice blanket. The accumulated heat leads to their awakening one by one over time. However, while the rock formations absorbing carbon dioxide from volcanic eruptions remain hidden beneath the ice, there is nothing to prevent its accumulation in the atmosphere, retaining solar warmth and gradually melting the glaciers. The melting ice creates cracks, fractures, and irregularities in the Earth's crust, leading to even more volcanoes. The process of melting also releases a significant amount of oxygen, which had been trapped in the ice for millions of years through a series of chemical reactions. Additionally, the accumulated heat caused Rodinia to break apart. 540 million years ago. The length of a day is already approximately 22 hours. 
The concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere has reached unprecedented levels. At this moment, the so-called Cambrian explosion occurs. A great multitude of complex living organisms seemingly emerges out of nowhere in the ocean. The temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius, and the oxygen level is approaching modern levels. However, the land remains lifeless. There is almost nothing on it except isolated areas with algae. The sun continues to bombard the Earth's surface with deadly radiation. Yet, at approximately 50 kilometers above the Earth, where the rays penetrate the atmosphere of our planet, something interesting happens. When encountering solar radiation, oxygen transforms into another gas, ozone. Gradually, it envelops the entire planet, absorbing deadly radiation. Without it, life on land simply wouldn't exist. After millions of years, the ozone layer thickens and the land is covered with green patches resembling moss. Despite its tiny size, this greenery performs an important function. It releases even more oxygen, causing its levels to sharply rise. Amphibians gradually begin to inhabit the appealing land over the course of time. 300 million years ago. The land becomes a realm of tropical swamps. The Okefenokee swamps in Georgia are considered a modern analog of the swamps that existed on Earth during that era. It is during this time that an extensive vegetative covering develops on the planet's surface for the first time in its history. Plants grew 20 to 30 meters tall, forming dense thickets and creating a humid tropical climate. Giant insects Meganura fly here while meter-long millipedes crawl. The gigantism of insects and animals during that ancient epoch is attributed to the high concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere. Tropical swamps occupied a significant portion of the Earth's continental surface for tens of millions of years. Evidence of this can be found today on all modern continents in coal deposits. On land, plant remains turned into coal, and in shallow waters, the remains of living organisms accumulated over millions of years. These will become another form of fossil fuel, oil and gas. Approximately 250 million years ago. By this time, the land is already inhabited by the ancestors of dinosaurs, Gorgonopsids, and their prey, Scutosauruses. However, their fate, like that of 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species, is sealed. Around 252 million years ago, the Permian-Triassic extinction began. It was the most massive extinction of all time. The true causes of it remain largely unknown to this day. However, the most likely version and one of the main reasons is considered to be the eruption of the Siberian traps, which occurred precisely during this period. Ash fills the air worldwide, blocking the sunlight. The atmosphere becomes filled with toxins and carbon dioxide. Periodically, streams of hot magma erupt to the surface. This continues for at least 30,000 years. The amount of basalt erupted from the depths of the Earth during this time would be enough to bury the United States under an almost 6-kilometer thick layer. 200 million years ago. The land is once again nearly lifeless. After 50 million years, the continents reconnect, forming a single supercontinent, Pangaea. During the Permian-Triassic extinction, 70% of all terrestrial vertebrate species perished, which means there is room for a new kind that will rule the planet like no other, dinosaurs. It is believed that these terrible lizards originated from a small number of reptiles that survived the Permian extinction. While they grow stronger and evolve, restless tectonic plates once again tear the Earth apart. 190 million years ago, Pangaea breaks apart, and 180 million years ago, the world takes on the familiar shapes for us and the Atlantic Ocean form. 65 million years ago. It seems that the ruling dynasty known as dinosaurs would reign on the planet forever, but a massive asteroid is already heading towards us. It is heading towards the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Today's Gulf of Mexico is nothing more than a crater formed by the impact of this giant. This is a true apocalypse for the dinosaurs. The asteroid destroys everything for thousands of kilometers. Even itself instantly vaporizes. The energy released upon impact is equivalent to the explosion energy of millions of atomic bombs. 
Fragments of the asteroid and Earth's crust scatter for thousands of kilometers. Meteor showers occur, earthquakes shake the ground, and tsunamis strike the coast. The Earth's surface heats up, vegetation spontaneously ignites. Smoke and ash shroud the planet for several months, blocking sunlight. The dominion of the dinosaurs, lasting 165 million years, comes to an end. 50 million years ago, mammals are confidently populating the planet. In reality, they appeared even during the time of the dinosaurs, but their mass settlement for understandable reasons could only occur after the disappearance of giant carnivores. 47 million years ago, the evolution of mammals is gaining momentum. The length of a day is nearly 24 hours, the temperature is around 24 degrees Celsius, and the oxygen level is almost the same as today. Four million years ago, along the eastern coast of Africa, a massive rift appears between the tectonic plates, forming the Earth's crust. It stretches for nearly 6,000 kilometers. Mountains grow along its edges, preventing moisture from the Indian Ocean from flowing across the land. It becomes hotter and drier. The fertile, moist forests of Africa turn into a dry savanna. One of the most popular theories suggests that it was due to this that our ancestors had to descend from the trees, stand upright, and go in search of food on two legs. Not long ago, very ancient hominid remains were discovered in Africa, dating back to the time when the lines leading to chimpanzees and humans diverged. It turns out that these hominids may have already been walking on two legs, that is, before their descendants came down from the tree. 10 to 12,000 years ago, the sharp leap in the development of human intelligence begins a tiny fraction of a second on the timescale since the birth of our planet. And yet, Earth, according to estimates of many specialists, has only passed about half of its lifespan. Who knows what lies ahead? Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss new interesting videos about space and the universe. Write in the comments what you would like to see in the next video. Thank you and see you next time.